of the International Children's Peace Prize receives a couple of things, three elements. First of all, he or she receives a statuette. That is the statuette. We here call it the Nkosi, named after the first recipient of that statuette, Nkosi Johnson. That was a while ago. The statue is made by a Dutch sculptor, Inge Ikink, every year uniquely sculpted. That's one. Number two, there is a study and care grant attached to this prize that enables the winner, he or she, to obtain education. Two, three, there is a project fund associated with this prize, which means that a project fund, which is worth 100,000 euros, will be invested by kids' rights in projects that are closely aligned to the winner's area of dedication. Now, this project fund has been, over the past 15 years, been very influential in lives of more than 100,000 vulnerable children. It is now my honor to introduce the founder and the chair of Kids' Rights, but he is also the founder of the Children's International Children's Peace Prize. Please welcome with me, Mr. Mark Delart. <clears throat> Dear viewers from around the world, girls and boys, fathers and mothers, grandmothers, grandfathers, neighbors, each and every one. Welcome. And a special welcome to Malala, who is with us, and to our patron Desmond Tutu and his wife, Lea. I'm very happy to have you here. We just witnessed 15 years history of the International Children's Peace Prize. And today, we are celebrating its 16th edition. This history and amazing journey are portraying and proving our strong belief that children can and will change the world. The 2020 finalists, Shanna, Ivana, and Sadat, are also true change makers. They move the world as the Children's Peace Prize statuette shows us. The Children's Peace Prize is not only a sign of recognition, but it is also providing a platform for the young winners to voice their powerful message to the world, touching millions of people. Last year, even 1.6 billion people. And these Children's Peace Prize winners are not alone in their actions for hope for a better world. Since Kids Rights launched the International Children's Peace Prize, we received over the years nominations from around the globe, from children from Brazil to Japan and from Russia to South Africa. Beacons of hope for their communities and their countries. Inspired by all these stories, two years ago, Kids' Rights, helped by the Postal Code Lottery, the Postcode Loterij, started a grassroots changemakers movement, where young changemakers could receive advice and seed money for their small projects. We were overwhelmed receiving so many hopeful stories and starting projects from all corners of the world. Stories from just ordinary kids, kids next door. For example, two children worried about the environment who mobilized other kids to do a beach cleanup, starting with one beach, and they are now mobilizing a whole region. Or the story from a girl who avoided two child marriages in her village after convincing her villagers. And after asking us for help, she and all her girls' team were able to reach out to other villages as well. I was really, really deeply touched because 
that's where change starts. There are little miracles. It's, it's humbling and very hopeful. And we do need hope very, very desperately. Seeing all the crises that we face, the climate crisis, the COVID crisis, the migrant crisis, and the widening gap between the haves and the have-nots. I think that we can say that we are in a pivotal point in history, a tipping point that could go both ways. Many of our youth understand this critical situation and try to make the world a better place by becoming active in their villages, neighborhoods, and schools. Also, young leaders rise. There are moral leaders like Malala, Greta, Emma Gonzalez, the other Children's Peace Prize winners, and the finalists of today holding up a mirror, a mirror to the world, offering as a mirror to our own humanity. Wake up. They just ask to be heard, and they're leading by example. The Kids' Rights Changemakers Movement developed into the first ever borderless digital youth state. The State of Youth launched last year at the Nobel Peace Summit and at the United Nations. We could reach 101 million youth last year, helped by Facebook, and we have more than 50,000 citizens now. And together, they bring positive change, bottom-up, in their communities. It's a wave of change, an emancipation wave of youth is happening, a wave fueled by hope, but also concern for the future. It's an unstoppable wave. Young change makers around the world watching now, please, you are invited to join. Mothers, fathers, grandmothers, grandfathers, neighbors, everyone, you are invited to support them. Change starts here and here. It's a journey from the head to the heart. Ladies and gentlemen, our planet desperately needs more compassionate and merciful people, peacemakers, change makers from all generations. And together we can and will move the world. Thank you.
Thanks, so many thanks to the Rotterdam Philharmonic Orchestra and the soloists who joined them from all over the world. It has now come part to... Don't worry, it's live. It's now come to the part of the most important part of this ceremony, which is the actual handing over of the prize, of the esteemed prize. It's a tradition, it has become a tradition, that each year a Nobel Peace Prize laureate hands out the International Children's Peace Prize. It has become a tradition, and that is a tradition because it was launched, the International Children's Peace Prize, at the Nobel Peace Prize Winner Summit in Rome in 2005. The person who is going to award our International Children's Peace Prize today was a winner, a laureate of the International Children's Peace Prize first in 2013, and the year after, in 2014, she was, became the Nobel Peace Prize laureate. She has been fighting all her life, all her young life, for the right of young girls to education. Please, ladies and gentlemen, give a warm welcome to Malala Yousafzai. Thank you for that kind introduction. Thank you to Kids Rights for inviting me to speak here today to celebrate the achievements of remarkable young advocates from around the world. I am the winner of International Children's Peace Prize in 2013, but I was also the nominee of this prize in 2011. So congratulations to all the finalists for making it up to here. When I spoke here in 2013, the world looked different. Our leaders did not look to young people to lead. They did not expect that we would soon influence global conversations and spark movements on everything from climate change, to racial justice, to girls' education. But here we are, whether it is through technology or arts or athletics, this generation of young people are eager to help solve our world's most pressing problems. In every community, in every country, they're speaking out and organizing and fighting for a more equitable future. I started my campaign for girls' education at 11 years old. I wrote a blog for the BBC about what life was like when the Taliban banned girls from going to school in my hometown in Swat Valley, Pakistan. At that time, I wanted to speak out to continue my education and help other girls in my community do the same. I didn't know if anyone would listen to someone so young, but I wanted people everywhere to know what was happening in my community and our schools. I never could have imagined that people around the world would hear my words and my call for education and equality would grow into a global movement. The three finalists for this year's International Children's Peace Prize had no such doubts. From petitioning to end water pollution, to ensuring students with disabilities have the educational resources they need, to tackling online harassment. These activists understand the power of their voices in order to change the world. Ivana, Sina, and Sadat, your work is ambitious and inspiring. You all are proving to the world what young people can achieve when they have the opportunities to learn and lead. You should all be so proud. Now, it is my honor to announce this year's honoree. The expert committee of the International Children's Peace Prize is proud to recognize Sadat Rahman for his ex extraordinary work to combat cyberbullying in his home country of Bangladesh. He's committed to promoting internet safety, digital literacy, and ensuring that those who need it can access psychosocial support. With his organization, Narayal Volunteers, and the mobile app he built, Sadat has reached over 45,000 teens in his community. Sadat, innovators like you are stepping up to help make our world a brighter and safer place. And I thank you so much for your work. Please, this everyone. morning. Join me in welcoming the 2020 International Children's Peace Prize winner, Sadat Rahman. Congratulations. 
This morning, the parents of a San Diego teenager are considering a lawsuit against his school district. They say weeks of constant bullying cost him his life. Rowdy Shitla Tarahalo, cyberbullying. Africa had the highest incidence of cyberbullying in the world. Cyberbullying. 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 Cyberbullying is a worldwide problem. Cyberbullying. Every day, thousands of children become a victim of this harassment on social media. I was a victim of the victim of the victim. I was a victim of the victim of the victim. I was a victim of the victim of the victim. I was a victim of the victim of the victim. The sixth grader committed suicide last week. He suffered nearly a year of cyberbullying. Suicide rate among the teenagers increased over the past decade. One of the reasons is cyberbullying. No child deserved that. It is time for a change. We need to stop this. Together with others, we can win this fight. My name is Sadat, and this is my story. Seventeen years ago, Sadat was born in Bangladesh. He grew up as the only child of his parents. Because of his father's job as postmaster, he moved around a lot throughout his childhood. Although this has been hard on him, he has made the most of it, learning new skills and making new friends in every home. Sadat discovered the power of coming together with other young people for the first time in 2017, when Rohingya people fleeing the atrocities in Myanmar sought refuge in Bangladesh. Sadat felt the need to do something, and he took action. He organized a protest for peace. He started an organization called Norail Volunteers. With hundreds of thousands of teenagers, he created awareness of child marriage, supports street children, promoting blood donation, and since the arrival of COVID-19, supplying hand-washing facilities in mosques and slums. And the organization is still growing and growing. সজনদের অভিযোগ কয়েক মাস ধরে বিদ্যালয়ে যাওয়া আসার পথে ভান্ডারী উপজেলা শহরের স্কুল ছাত্রী রুকাইয়ে রূপাকে প্রেমের প্রস্তাব দিয়ে আসছিল একই এলাকার বখাটে তামিম খান In August 2019 Sadat was moved by the story of 15 year old Rupa who committed suicide after suffering cyberbullying প্রথমে আমি যখন সাইবার বুলিং সম্পর্কে অনেক বেশি ইন্টারনেটে থেকে জানলাম তখন আমার মনে হলো যে আসলে সচেতনতা করা উচিত এবং পাশাপাশি শুধুমাত্র সচেতনতা হবে না হি ডিড সাম রিসার্চ এন্ড ফাউন্ড আউট দ্যাট মেনি ইয়াং পিপল ডোন্ট রিপোর্ট देयर সাইবার বুলিং প্রবলেমস দে আর আফ্রেড অফ দ্য পুলিশ বিকজ দ্য পুলিশ ডোন্ট নো হাউ টু হ্যান্ডল দিস কেসেস ইয়াং গার্লস আর অফেন টু অ্যাশেম টু রিভিল देयर অনলাইন কন্টাক্টস টু देयर প্যারেন্টস it can lead to physical health issues, self-harm, and even suicide. Sadat came up with a solution to encourage young people to report cyberbullying. The Cyber Teen app, where young people can learn about internet safety and report their own cases of cyberbullying in confidentiality. Sadat uses his technical skills to help other children and young people through the innovative cyberbullying app. Together with his friends, he works in an office on cases, creates awareness, counsels victims, and prepares workshops about internet safety. I have this opportunity. I don't know if it's so big or small. My contribution doesn't matter, but the most important thing is I'm here, and this is the best thing. Sadat is our leader. Actually, Sadat is our leader, and Sadat uh, finds some new idea, and we as a team uh, make it perfect to uh, deliver. 
Sadaf is doing something which is world changing, which will inspire the young people. So I think this will change the world and inspire a lot of people all over the world. Sadat works closely with the local police to make sure they deal appropriately with complaints. So through uh, Sadat, we usually solve these problems. We get the information, we just send my police in civil dress, we go there and catch that bad guys. We work together. We, I am also part of these things. I personally proud of Sadat and Cyber Kings. Cyber team not had to. That only had to. Three or four years ago, when we met, we had to do some kind of work. 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 We had to do some আমাদের সাইবার টিনসের নাম্বার তো বাড়ছে কারণ প্রথমে আমরা যখন কাজ করেছিলাম তখন আমরা মাত্র 5-6 জন মিলে এই সাইবার টিনসটা শুরু করেছি তো আমার সামনের পরিকল্পনা হচ্ছে এই অ্যাপটি প্রথমত বাংলাদেশের 64 জেলায় রান করা এবং বিশ্বের সব জায়গায় রান করা কারণ হচ্ছে শুধুমাত্র বাংলাদেশের কিছু কিছুরে কিন্তু আত্মতা করছে না বিশ্বের অনেক দেশে কিন্তু এটা হচ্ছে আমি সাইবার বুলিং নিয়ে কাজ করতে আগ্রহী এই কারণে আমি দেখতে চাই না পৃথিবীতে কোন কিশোর কিশোরী in the past year, over 250 issues were solved. More than 45,000 teenagers were reached with internet safety seminars in schools and colleges. Over thousands of teenagers downloaded the app, and eight cyber criminals were arrested. And that is why Sadat is the rightful winner of the International Children's Peace Prize 2020. After extensive deliberation, the expert committee decided to award Muhammad Sadat Rahman from Bangladesh International Children's Peace Prize 2020. The expert committee, first of all, wants to compliment the other finalists of the International Children's Peace Prize 2020, Ivana Ortega Siret and Siana Castello. Both finalists have done great work with children's rights in their, in their respective communities and therefore deserve to be recognized as finalists of the International Children's Peace Prize 2020. Sadat really stood out among the excellent nominees. The expert committee selected Sadat as the winner because of his groundbreaking work to stop cyberbullying in his home country, Bangladesh. Sadat not only educated thousands of youth on internet safety and the consequences of cyberbullying, he also created an easy and accessible way of reporting cyberbullying by creating the Cyber Teens app. The strength of the app lies in the technical creation and especially in the collaboration between the police, cyber experts, and the social workers initiated by Sadat to ensure that users of the app get the right help. This makes it a very effective way to combat cyberbullying. The effectiveness of the app is evidenced by the fact that the app has already been downloaded by thousands of youth and that multiple cybercrime perpetrators have been brought to justice because of the app. All children have the right to be protected from violence, no matter if it is physical or mental, offline or online. Cyberbullying is a violation of that right. Sadat is an inspiration for today's youth. He's calling on young people all over the world to stop cyberbullying and to help peers in their community who suffer from mental and emotional violence. Sadat is a true change maker. He has impacted the lives of many children in a positive way and protected their rights. Therefore, he is the rightful winner of the International Children's Peace Prize 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, Sadat Rahman,
Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Your Excellencies, members of the committee, ladies and gentlemen, their fellow children, and all those viewing this program from the other side of the screen. Assalamu alaikum. Today is like a dream to me. Today, I feel so proud to represent Bangladesh among so many important people. I wish you all a very warm welcome. It makes me extremely happy to receive this prize from Nobel Peace Prize laureate, Ms. Malala Yousafzai. She and all of the other previous awardees have been and continue to be my inspiration. I'm here today all the way from a very remote rural area of Bangladesh called Norail, in this beautiful place of The Hague to share my journey. In 2017, when Rohingyas sought refuge in Bangladesh due to the violence in their country, I started organizing activities for them. It was then that I discovered the power of youth coming together. Shortly after that, I started a small organization, Noral Volunteers. At that time, I knew very little about cyberbullying. It was this one incident that made me aware of this problem. It was the suicide of a 15-year-old girl named Rupa. You learned her story in the video you just saw. And she is not alone. There are so many likes, uh, there are so many others like her. Cyberbullying is a growing and very common issue. In Bangladesh, almost half of the teenagers on the internet are victims of cyberbullying. Let me tell you what teenagers experience when they are victim of cyberbullying. First, they are really scared because they do not know what to do. But then they get frustrated because there isn't anything they can do. This often leads to sleepless nights, problem at school, anxiety, and in the worst cases, it can lead to them attempting suicide. When I heard the story of Rupa, I knew then that something had to be done. I had this idea that the only way to fight this problem on the internet is through the internet. That's when my team and I created a website and app called CyberTeens. We built a network of experts to help teenage victims of cyberbullying. If a victim makes a report through the app, it will be forwarded to a psychologist, a cyber expert, or to the police. Within one year, we are able to help more than 215 teen teenagers and brought eight cyber criminals to justice. I strongly believe Awareness, empathy, counseling, and action are the four drivers of force to combat cyberbullying. The fight against cyberbullying is like a war. And in this war, I am a warrior. If everybody keeps supporting me, then together we will win this battle against cyberbullying. I will not stop until we will receive no more cases through the app. I want to tell all the children from all around the world that if I had remained silent, waiting for the government or any adult to come forward to do something, then maybe nothing would have happened. But now I have already helped so many children. 
If I can bring a modern solution to a modern problem, living a rural area, then why can't you? There is a superhero who lives in all of us. Let's work together and make this world peaceful. One today's special day, I wish to show my gratitude to Almighty Allah. Also, I want to thank my parents who have supported me and helped me to get here. And thanks to my teammates and mentors. My heart is thanks to my Honorable Prime Minister, Sheikh Hasina, for gifting us a digital Bangladesh. And a special thanks to his right expert committee who believe in my work and give me honor of such an international recognition. This recognition is of the issue of cyberbullying. I would also like to call upon all the other change makers to continue to fight for our rights. Thank you very much. Shabai Bhala Thakben. Sadat, come over, please. Get close, not too close, because that's not allowed, but thank you so much. And again, congratulations. Come, stand next to me and tell me, uh, first of all, the, the most obnoxious question, how do you feel? Super, I can't explain. You called yourself a warrior, you're a warrior. <laughs> yeah. And you were called a change maker by Malala Yousafzai. That must be a great yeah. honor. Yeah, it's, it's very honor to me. Yes. You're very honored to be here. Yeah. You gave a great speech. Tell me again, just to be sure that we know how big this problem is of cyberbullying. What percentage of the world's children, más o menos, experience cyberbullying? Yeah. In Bangladesh, 49%. In USA, 59%. In and the that, US, 59%. And yeah. in Bangladesh, 49%. Yeah. And all over the world, uh, one out of three uh, teenagers face cyberbullying. So one out of three, this yeah. is a huge problem. Yes. And you talked about your initiatives. Yeah. Can you tell me again very quickly those initiatives and vision videos that you make? Yeah. You... We make short videos. We have website, we have app, and we are in uh, internet safety camping in uh, different schools and colleges to uh, make uh, awareness to the teenagers. Tell me the name of the app again. Cyber Teens. Cyber Teens. Yeah. Okay. So now, um, now that you are a warrior and you've been called a change maker, what's next? What are you going to do? You're going to make sure your app is successful, but yes. also not successful in it that you don't want any more cyberbullying, and yeah. that would be success. Yeah. So that your app is no longer necessary. Yeah, that time I will success. Okay. When uh, no complaint will come to our apps and nobody download my apps. So that means cyberbullying is not a remain. So that would be a great victory for you if nobody downloads your app anymore. That goes yeah. against what people usually want. Yeah, inshallah, I believe best. <laughs> inshallah. So um, tell me one more time, you're here in The Hague in this historic setting. You just received the statuette. Tell me one more time from the bottom of your heart. How do you feel? How does that feeling? I can't really explain it now. <laughs> it's super amazing things, and I am very um, honored for this recognition. You're going to be part of the legacy in the 2020 edition, yes. but you're going to be part of the legacy of the International Children's Peace Prize yes. for a time to yeah. come. It's, you're going it's to be, a dream to me. <laughs> it's a dream come yeah. true. Yeah. And again, just go back to one. There was one incident that you already told us. There's one single incident that triggered you to take action, right? Yes. So that's all it took. Yes. One incident. And then you thought, this cannot stand. I have to do something about it. Actually, I, I want to see a world where no children are face cyberbullying. So this is my dream, and I work. Will, I will be work for this dream fulfilled. And dream true. fulfilled. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank Sadat you. Rahman. It is time to. It is time to come to an end of this International Children's Peace Prize award ceremony, but. I won't leave you and all the inspirational speakers and musicians that have worked together here for the International Children's Peace Prize. Maybe the theme, not only that change is possible, but also maybe go back to one of the old golden classics of the 60s, all you need is love.
nothing you can say that can be saved. Nothing you can do but you can learn how to be you in time. It's easy. All you need is love. All you need is love. All you need is love. Love. Love is all you need. together now.